I was going to begin with introducing myself, but uh, I, I think I can skip that part uh, now. Um, the way I like to introduce myself uh, usually is uh, like a bum, because that's what I like to do most. I just like to sit at home and do nothing. Uh, that's me, and that's how I've lived my life uh, all these years. Uh, that also explains why I'm a little late, because I was working till 7, and then I went off to sleep. Um, I uh, didn't always plan to be a filmmaker. Uh, I just followed my heart. Uh, it sounds like a cliche, but uh, that's what happened with me. Um, I did commerce because uh, uh, I didn't like science, it's, and I had no idea what commerce even meant. And once I did commerce, I just uh, was, I got 85%, and that only uh, led me to an evening college. So I had uh, all the time to be a bum once again. So what I did was, um, to keep myself busy, I took up uh, a job at this uh, tabloid called uh, Metro Ads. And uh, that's when I started working, uh, in my second year of college. And uh, that's also when I started doing film reviews. And that was my first connection with uh, films as such. Uh, it took me uh, two years, or uh, maybe four years, because after uh, I passed out of college, I did my MS in communication. Uh, so it took me four years, that's till the time I finished my course, to find out all the things that I was doing wrong uh, while criticizing a film. Uh, because uh, when you're starting out, you think criticizing is about making fun of films. So you just let go and have uh, a lot of fun. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about film criticism, because uh, th today I want to talk about uh, filmmaking and where we are today. I'm sure there are many of you in this hall who probably want to make a film or who wish you could make a film. But then films, as we all know, cost a lot of money. So what is, uh, how realistic is it to make it into films today? How is it possible for us uh, to follow our dreams or follow your heart? How practical is it? How realistic is it? Um, I had no plans to be a filmmaker. I did uh, my MS in communication. I was thinking of doing advertising. I thought I'm going to get like a high paying job and you know uh, push off to the US. Uh, I thought the Hindu would be a good place for me to um, uh, brush up on my English and uh, give my GRE and uh, just push off. Uh, but then uh, the thing about being young is that you're not always using your head. Uh, you use your heart. And that, I think, is the most special thing about being young. I think most of us, the more conditioned we are becoming uh, to the system, we start um, we stop listening to our heart and just do what we are told to do, what we are told to do in college, what we are told to do with a job and everything. Um, that's what happened with me. I thought uh, I'm going to do this MS and then I'm going to do my advertising and uh, uh, push off and get like a high paying job. And then I fell in love. I fell in love with this girl and uh, that kind of changed everything. Because I was doing my internship in advertising uh, six-week internship at one of the best advertising agencies in the country, FCB Olka at that point of time. Uh, I was doing great with my job. They were very impressed. They did not expect me that, they did not expect that I would finish all the ta impossible tasks they were giving me. But what happened was that it was a Sunday when I was working when I realized that I, I, I asked myself this question, is this what I want to do for the rest of my life? And I thought I had it all figured out. I did commerce, and then I did communication. And here I was doing my internship. And at the end of the internship, they were offering me a job. I could just go down that road, advertising, do everything which I wanted to do, uh, or I had planned to do. But then I just couldn't see myself working on Sunday, like that day I'd, I was in Bombay, completely lost, with no friends. Uh, uh, all my friends were back in, uh, you know, but obviously but today you can make friends wherever you go. But when I was doing my internship, I was thinking, here I am, totally lost, corporate world, working on a Sunday. The girl I love is somewhere else. So is this what I want from life? And that's, a, that's the day I decided, no, that's not what I wanted. I just wanted to be with, I just wanted to be a bum and be with the girl I love. So I said no to advertising. I came to Madras. Uh, since I'd already applied to the Hindu, I 
decided to join the Hindu. I took it one day at a time. Uh, we were meeting up uh, with friends, in, um, and we realized how we all had made plans, but life had something else in store. Um, and we thought that makes a good movie, because uh, that is pretty much all our lives. All of us, when we are at the crossroads of our lives, we figure out that we, how do we decide what to do next? Some of us listen to our head, some of us listen to our heart, some of us are confused, some of us just want to escape reality. So we found these four prototypes and we made a movie. I'm not going to go into how we made a movie. To cut a long story short, I made that movie for the girl I loved. She got married to someone else, but I became a filmmaker. Um, that was the most special learning experience of my life. So. It took me eight years and uh, three and a half lakh rupees to make my first film. It was a very bad film. It was a, uh, but it was one of the greatest lessons I had ever learned because uh, it taught me a lot about independent filmmaking. It taught me a lot about chasing your dreams. Um, can we start with the presentation? Yeah, so um, today when Obviously, when you're going out to make a film, you are an independent filmmaker because nobody's going to give you, nobody's going to produce your film, no studio is going to, uh, uh, you know, say, okay, uh, let's just invest in this young, bright talent. No, that's not going to happen at all. So you are an independent filmmaker. But the irony is, when you're an independent filmmaker, you are the most dependent person. You're dependent on everything. You're dependent on everyone, uh, right, through all the stages of filmmaking. The first one being the pre-production, pre which is when you decide what is the film that you want to go, what, what is the film you want to make. Um, for, uh, since we have only another eight minutes more, I'm just going to talk about uh, this particular film that uh, we made, okay, called Good Night, Good Morning, which we released on January 20th. The DVD came out earlier this week. Um, was a film we made because a friend of mine bought a camera and he said, uh, let's make a movie, Machan. This is the movie. You, uh, this is the camera you wanted me to buy. I bought it. I know everything about the camera. Let's make a movie. And I said, No, uh, come on, wait. You cannot make a movie with just a camera because movie costs money. Uh, and if I have learned anything from my first film after spending eight years, is that movies cost money. You cannot make movies without money. It's not possible uh, because it would show. It would show in locations. Now, how, how do you, uh, what is the difference between a home video and a movie? A home video has two elements. It has your home and it has a video. Now, as an independent filmmaker, obviously you're not shooting on film because it's expensive. So you're using video. And if you don't have locations, you're shooting in at home. So if you're going to make a movie without any money, you're going to end up making a home video and not a movie. So that was the, f that was the first thing we decided not to do. No home, no video, okay? Uh, we might use video, but we're going to find out different ways of using video because um, a film is what you see uh, inside a frame. So you have to create uh, a compelling world inside that frame. Um, so it was as a joke that I told him that with no money, we can only make a movie with three people inside a house or two people on the phone. So it was basically a joke. And three people um, in the house was already done by Ram Gopal Verma, so we obviously couldn't do that. Um, so we were more excited about this possibility of uh, doing a phone call firm, because you know, even as I was telling him, he was on the phone. He, he got a call, and uh, it was a long three or four hour conversation we had late in the night. And we realized the amount of time we were spending on the phone. And that's when we realized it, it would be great if we made a film completely based on a phone conversation with a split screen. You've seen Aragon, right? Uh, K. Balachandar film. There's a, there's a song in that where the, the two people speak uh, into the night, throughout the night. So you've seen Before Sunrise. We've seen the whole film being sustained through a conversation. So all these things gave us the encouragement that we could actually make a film with just a conversation. So that's, uh, and so now, if the firm demands only this, then there is no reason for you to do anything else. So we spent a month writing the script. We did storyboards for it. And then we decided to pitch it to actors. Now the thing is, if you have a good script, you can get the, the right kind of uh, actors. Uh, 
good actors, uh, actors cost good, uh, actors who are good cost money, and actors who don't cost you more, as I've realized, you know, with uh, experience, even with this own firm, th with this very firm, because it's not that I had all great actors in this firm. Uh, same for the crew. Now, your script is what could cover you, so you have to spend, as an independent filmmaker, you have to spend, uh, you have to make sure that you spend enough time on your script. Uh, it covers your back, so make sure it covers enough ground. Um, and while you're shooting, uh, so what happened with us is that a Bollywood actress, I'm not going to name her, she loved our script. She came on board, she said, I love your script, let's do it. Uh, what also came with her is uh, uh, a huge bill. We had to pay for a business class ticket, we had to pay, uh, pay for a makeup artist. We went to the US, we spent um, to, uh, about 13 lakhs to shoot just the four minutes, first opening four minutes of the film because the film was set in New York. Why was it set in New York? Uh, why was it set in New York? It's just a phone call film. I could have shot it at home. Again, it goes back to you don't want to make a home video. If you're creating a frame, that frame, it has to be a world. It has to be a world which people haven't seen. It has to be a world which sucks people in, and you have to tell a story. The people who are watching don't care that you don't have, a mo uh, that you don't have, that you don't have money. They want to watch a good movie. So be honest to your script. Obviously, if it's about two people, even if it's about two, just two people talking on the phone, it's set in a world. It's set in a world which is larger than just their house. You have to follow them. You have to follow them. So we decided that we're going to uh, start off, uh, since it was a New Year's film, we set, decided we're going to set it in New York. It's an English film. It's got a lot of American pop culture references. Its, th it's, it's themes are about technology and um, uh, you know, a modern day romance. We wanted to set a global story in a global place, so we decided on New York. So we planned that we're going to shoot between Christmas and New York, uh, Christmas and New Year's, uh, on New Year's Eve in New York City. And um, we go there with a Bollywood actress. We spend 13 lakhs just to shoot the first four minutes of the film. We go there and we realize that the Hollywood actor we have signed suddenly does not want to do it free because he's like, your Bollywood actress has come on a business class ticket, she's staying in a five-star hotel where I'm taking the subway here. So suddenly, he says, this is not how an independent film works. So he, dem he demanded money. And what happens when you're dealing with two big actors, like a Hollywood actor and a Bollywood actor? There's, there's always going to be clash of egos. That's what, what I said. Good actors cost money, but uh, th you'll have to figure out a way to deal with these uh, unprecedented uh, things. Because Murphy, you've heard of Murphy's Law. Murphy is going to be your first assistant director. We went to New York and we didn't have a film uh, because these actors wouldn't reach an understanding on you know, whether they wanted to work together because of this. So what do you do? What would you do if you, are a, if you don't have a producer, if you put all your savings onto this film, if you go to New York and if you shoot this film, what, uh, what would you do? What did I do? Um, what I did was I decided that uh, I have to prepare for the worst because, I, and this comes from experience, I shot my first film twice. So what I did was on New Year's Eve, I decided to shoot with the Bollywood actress in silhouettes. Yeah, it's kind of mean, which means that I made her walk. It's a Bollywood actress and I'm using her as a body double. So I shoot her only in shadows, silhouettes. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm telling her this is to you know, build mystery about the character. Uh, reveal who you are till the, uh, till the end of the opening credits, and then we shoot the whole credits. And then the other part we needed was the climax. We needed to like shoot in the snow. Uh, it was about when these two people who had spoken on the phone meet each other halfway. Um, can you just click on the alternate ending, please? If you uh, see, you only see a taxi. You don't see anything else, right? Because this is uh, authentic footage we shot uh, in uh, New York. And this is a close-up which we shot in Chennai with a new actress. That behind is Chembarambakam Lake. And that snow that you see coming is that uh, party snow which is done. And since the whole movie was done with split screen, we used that whole split screen to show and then we cut to, because we didn't want to focus on that, we cut to a whole lot of other things, tying up some of the subplots in the film. And uh, 
yeah, you can even forward if you if you like, since we are running out of time. Yeah. So what happens is uh, you see the, the because it's party snow, the the snow is kind of thick. It's it's not light. Um, yeah. So this was the ending. Now what happens is uh, that yeah, yeah, you can turn it off. It's all adult. <laughs> so what happens is. Um, I had I I took all the footage. Okay, I hired a helicopter. I took uh, the aerial shots. I hired a taxi. I took shots between New York and Philadelphia. I took uh, shots of the highway. And then what I did was I just hired a car in Chennai. I used a projector like this where New York was running behind, as in the highway shots were running behind. And the car was static and they were holding. Now the problem was that the, the car has a the a left hand drive, and here we needed a, we had only a right hand drive car. We searched and we searched and we searched. We just couldn't find a car which, with this. Finally, we found one, but it wasn't good looking. And the solution was something very, very simple. We just had to buy a steering wheel, which cost 600 rupees. And the actor holds the steering wheel for throw the film. So that's how we ended up shooting it. And then we shot this in Chembarambakam. But the point I'm trying to make is, uh, can we go to the next slide? Well, a good script could really cover your uh, behind. Yeah, so we decided that the firm had to, no, I was told to use pictures to make it, so that's why. Next slide. So films are made on the editing table. So uh, when, we d when we were putting things together, we decided, uh, we saw that uh, the, f the snow was looking bad, this whole thing was kind of looking, uh, it, it didn't seem very uh, needed. Um, so what do we do? Uh, we had to be very honest with ourselves. We had to say that, yeah, we did put in a lot of effort shooting it. We did do uh, the best we could. But if it's not good, we have to just let go. That scene that you saw in the film, despite what we did, is not in the film anymore because we arrived at a much better ending because we were open. Uh, I'd, I'd leave it to you to watch the film to figure out what the ending is, but that's not what the ending is. Can we go to the next one? Yeah, that's the video. So, bottom line, studios don't care. Uh, they are only interested in stars. Fests, festivals, film festivals, they only want films which are not shown before. They don't care. People, they were torrented and watch it. I'm sure you're all very aware. They're not going to buy tickets. So at the end of the day, nobody's going to watch your film. I'm sorry. This is supposed to be a motivational talk, but nobody's going to watch your film. But the good thing is, you want to make films, and that's the only reason to be making films. Thank you.